So the fake meat fad has finally been exposed as a complete waste of money. In case anybody was curious, good old Beyond Meat. We've talked about this gentleman a couple times, not, not this one, but last year a top executive at one of America's biggest alternative meat producer manufacturers was arrested for sinking his teeth into another man during a road rage incident in Arkansas. Okay, Douglas Ramsey, uh, chief operating officer of Beyond Meat, later pleaded guilty to punching the motorist and biting him on the nose. The confrontation took place in a car park following an American football game after Ramsey accused the victim of bumping one of the front tires of his SUV. Because that is the right amount of rage for a tire bump is to bite a man's nose off his face. Somebody clearly needs anger management classes. For a company dedicated to weaning people off me, it's hard to think of a more unfortunate bit of publicity than one of your top bosses trying to tuck in to a potential customer. Like literally, your, your whole entire premise is don't eat meat and then you bite the meat off of another man's face. Just saying, maybe he, nope, I'm not even gonna go there. I was gonna say the whole Philadelphia, the streets there with the drugs and people who eat the faces, but that's a different story. Now, nope, lost it, hold on, I hit a button because this is what happens when I talk too fast and do too much at once. Here we go. Oh yeah. But then this is an outfit with a penchant for a fatuous hipster babble, <laughs> such as help humans eat nutritious and eat what you love. So you can understand if Ramsey thought he was being encouraged to eat meat rather than stop consuming it. Or perhaps after being forced to consume nothing but faux flesh made from beetroot juice and methyl cellulosis for months on end, he craved some real bone and gristle. I mean, he doesn't exactly look like the sharpest tool in the shed either with I'm just putting it out there like that. Another possibility is that Ramsey was angry after seeing the state of Beyond Meat share price and concluding, like many other people, that the fake meat fat is nothing more than another venture capital fueled waste of money. It's certainly hard to conclude otherwise after an abysmal set of financial results wiped an eye-watering 19 PC off its already battered share price. Sales have collapsed by nearly a third in the last three months alone. The company is burning through cash and forecasts have been torn up. Now, if you watch the video about Tyson um, Chicken, Tyson Foods, closing some of their, their uh, manufacturing plants, could not think of the word, closing some of their manufacturing plants, I mentioned to you that Tyson had actually invested in Beyond Meat. They put millions of dollars into Beyond Meat. And then just a few months ago, they said, mm, give me. And they pulled back. They sold their shares. They pulled back, got their money back, and then started investing in their own fake meat, meat alternative. So I'm sure that pulling the money out of Beyond Meat is what is not helping them right now. And when you're looking at it as like a shareholder or a stock or, you know, potential where you want to invest your money, when you see a big corporation like Tyson Foods pull out, it's not going to give you the warm and fuzzies that you should basically start putting your money in. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. The California-based company was supposed to be the poster child for the vegan movement, but instead it risked becoming a symbol of the worst excesses of the cheap money era of the last decade. Beyond Meat debuted on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange in May of 2019 at $25 per share. The listing received the enthusiastic backing of Wall Street, yet got the full Silicon Valley treatment. A star-studded roster of no less than seven investment banks were the underwriters for a float that was 30 times oversubscribed despite the company's questionable financial history. In its last year before going public, Beyond Foods managed to chalk up losses of $30 million, having generated just $88 million of turnover. But like so much of what comes out of the Golden State, its prospects appear to have been an all too familiar case of hope triumphing over reality. Shares in Beyond Meat rocketed as high as $234 in the weeks after the share sell, briefly valuing the company at $14 billion before coming crashing down. By the time Ramsey's human picnic, <laughs> the stock was trading around the $15 mark. The shares are now down at $12, where they may stay well, uh, where they may well stay amid analysts talk about the need to raise additional capital. There are many things wrong with the fake meat industry, not least of the concept itself. Surely the overwhelming reason that the vast majority of vegetarians and vegans stop eating meat is that they abhor the killing of animals. So why would they then want to recreate the experience, blood and all, only using pea protein instead? My suspicion, admittedly based on nothing other than a strong inkling, is that vegans don't want food that bleeds, just as meat eaters don't crave burgers made in a laboratory from potato starch. So who does that leave? 
virtue signaling Gen Zers bored with drinking their tasteless oat milk lattes? That's if they can afford the luxury. Another oddity of fake meat products is that they are often more expensive than the real thing. And where they're not, they certainly wouldn't be considered a cheap alternative. So if you're toying with the idea of dabbling in veganism, one look at the prices may make it a fairly fleeting thought. And if you are already a vegetarian, you might conclude that a plate of old fashioned legumes is far more affordable, not to mention more nutritional. In response to perceptions that its products are unhealthy and overly processed, Beyond Meat has launched an advertising campaign that seeks to highlight the supposed health benefits of its project or products. <laughs> Close enough, project product, same thing. Is an education issue. The facts are there. The health benefits are very strong. Chief Executive Ethan Brown said in a conference call with investors. Before I go any farther, please let me explain to you. I went vegan for about three years for about three years because meat like beef and stuff was hurting my joints hurting my bones and I watched a lot of documentaries and then I did some research and then I was just I was over it for a while so I was vegan for about three years the one thing I would not eat while I was vegan fake meat you know why it's all effing chemicals like what one if you don't want to eat meat you probably don't even want the legitimately the texture of it because then it like triggers that whole oh is this real whatever and plus fake meat does not taste like real meat the only thing i ever had that tasted like actual meat were alpha chicken patties tasted like actual breaded chicken patties like you used to get in school chicken sandwiches back in like middle school and high school it tasted like those so nothing great or like the chicken sandwiches at a quick trip qt it tasted like those not the you know highest end chicken you could ever get but at least it was the closest one i'd ever had but beyond meat i'm like deathly allergic to coconut oil most fake meat alternatives are based on a coconut oil binder, if you will, and pea protein and stuff like that. So I can't eat them anyway. I did not realize that the first time I ate Beyond Meat. I did try it. I ate one of them and it just tasted like somebody opened up my mouth and poured a bunch of chemicals in it and then gave it like this weird texture. It was awful. And then the ensuing physical um, respiratory issues afterwards did not help. But the, the fact of the matter is, most vegans, and I'm going to say most vegans and most vegetarians aren't running out and spending $12 on Beyond Meat. They're just going to go eat beans and rice and fruits and vegetables and things like that. They're not going to waste it on that kind of stuff because it tastes like shit and it's not healthy for you. Nothing about it is healthy for you with all those chemicals they have in there. And it's, uh, it's, it's expensive. So horrible idea. Now it says here in the end for its for all its expensive technology and tens of billions of investment, the fake meat industry was no more equipped to escape the twin forces of inflation and monetary tightening than any other company. With household budgets under immense pressure, is it any wonder sales are plummeting? Again, when they cost more than real meat and it doesn't really have anything in it except for chemicals, you shouldn't be that expensive to begin with. The bubble has burst as shoppers seek out cheaper alternatives and many are no doubt reminded that there are better tasting ones too. Or is it just that plant-based food for all its clever marketing isn't very good? It may turn out to be short-lived fad even by the standards of the American tech industry. Now I will say quinoa based burgers that have vegetables and stuff in them, those are actually really good. They don't have the chemicals. It's the chemicals of the Beyond Meat and those other fake meat alternatives that really d make it pointless and make it just not worth eating. Um, prof profligate venture capitalists have an unenviable history of throwing their weight behind some truly terrible business ideas. But the last 10 years of rock bottom interest rates promises to serve up some of its costliest misadventures yet, having also blessed us with 10 minute supermarket deliveries, electric scooters and restaurants serving edible insects fried crickets anybody the industry must learn to stop believing every optimistic idea is the next big thing so i don't know how many of you out there eat the fake meat and the stuff like that to me it's not a great idea it's not worth it it does not taste good it's expensive uh, the sodium in it is stupid the chemicals in it is stupid now this little thing here how the fake meat movement ate itself i just want to go over this real quick because it was hailed as the future of food when beyond meat launched its vegan food in 2012 it launched in 2012 specializing in meat-esque burgers and sausages there was a lot of interest and starry investment from dun -da -da -da, hey drum roll bill gates uh and leonardo dicaprio hmm Kim Kardashian put a video about it on her Instagram. Oh, that's how you know you've made it when Kim K puts you on IG. McDonald's and KFC use Beyond Meat in their vegan options, although they were stupid because they were still cooking them on the same grill they were cooking their regular stuff on. So it's not really vegan at that point. It's just a non-meat-based patty cooked in meat grease. 
Hmm. Uh, let's see. And when the company launched on the NASDAQ exchange in 2019, it was one of the hottest shares in recent history with trading up 160% on the opening day. Investors backed Beyond Meat and others like it to grab a huge share of the burgeoning market and meat alternatives that were good for the eater and good for the planet. Four years on, Beyond Meat is having a long week. On Monday, the firm reported that sales had fallen by almost a third for the three months uh, to the end of June compared with a year earlier, and that it now expected annual revenue of 360 to 380 million rather than early estimates as much as 415 million. That's uh, a pretty big dip, if you ask me. The U.S. company, which sells its products at major U.K. supermarkets, blamed softer demand in the plant-based meat category, high inflation, rising interest rates, and concerns about the likelihood of a recession. And the fact that it's chemicals and it tastes like shit. They keep forgetting to mention those two things. Chief Executive Ethan Brown warned that the company had been affected by dark forces opposing veganism. Okay, you... Okay. Uh, this change in perception is not without encouragement from interest groups, he said, who have succeeded in seeding doubt and fear around the ingredients and process used to create our and other plant-based meats. No, no, I don't think people out there are, are doing all that. I just think your stuff sucks. Like, that's, I mean, own up to it, bro. So has veganism peaked? Heck, a vegan sausage company reduced its range recently, blaming lack of demand. Meatless Farm, another vegan food company, stopped trading in June, and other companies are struggling to maintain the growth that they and their backers hoped for. I am not surprised by the Beyond Meat news, says Max Lamana, a vegan chef and food writer. A lot of it has to do with the cost of living. Everything is getting tightened and people are reverting back to what they know and how they used to shop. It can be pricey when you see two burger patties for, this is European, $3 to $6, and you're not sure if that's what you want to be spending money on. When Beyond Meat launched, red meat was having a bad press in the wake of research linking it to an increased risk of cancer. Meatless burgers seemed like the perfect solution as healthy fast food hit the mainstream. You can't say healthy and fast food in the same sentence. I just want everybody to be 100% like clear of that. No. No. Uh, da, 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 da. But what exactly is in these fake meats and how healthy are they really? Many cookbook authors like Lamana are eschewing meat substitutes and turning back to vegetable-based proteins. Books like uh, Dr. Chris Van Tulliken's Ultra Processed People have drawn attention to possible health risks of ultra processed foods, which include many vegan alternatives where plant derived products are treated extensively to mimic their meaty brethren. We already know that highly processed things are going to make you sick and kill you over time. They have a ton of chemicals in them, a ton of carcinogens, a ton of PFAS, as we've talked about these things. And one of the worst of those will be the fake meat alternatives because they're going through so many, so much rigor morale. I don't know if that's the right word here, but we're going to go with it of trying to mimic something else that they're adding in all these different chemicals to try to get to that. It tastes like chicken uh, kind of thing. And all it's doing in the long run is destroying your innards. Just, just so we're fully, fully aware. A vegan hot dog is probably no better for you than a meat one, says Renee McGregor, a dietitian who works with athletes and is the author of Training Food. Vegan mayonnaise, for example, often contains modified maize starch, sugar, and natural flavoring. All processed and worse for you than non-vegan mayonnaise. So there's that. I tend not to eat vegan alternatives, says Lamana. Uh, I prefer having a home-cooked meal and using vegetables in the way they are intended to be cooked. Many of these vegan products have a lot of unnecessary ingredients that are going to deter people. Instead, his book has recipes for dishes including pulled mushroom tacos and sticky aubergine and peanut salad. Either way, y'all, this article, there's a whole lot in here. We're not going to go through all of it. It's just more chefs talking about how stupid uh, vegan alternatives are. And I know there's vegans out there watching this who are like, but I love my Beyond Meat. Cool. You do you, boo. Just understand that instead of having the fake burger that's not a burger, just eat the vegetables and the legumes and the, the grains and the whatever else. Maybe make your own stuff. It's not really a great idea to eat these chemical-filled things. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Squirrel Tribe, thanks for being here. Don't go eat fake meat. Go eat a real burger or go eat vegetables, okay? Whichever way you choose, I would say stay away from all the fake meat alternatives. Just me, though.